Hey everybody, it's Jared Ruth here with Skogman Realty. I'm sitting here with Roy Wire of Vigilant Home Inspections. How are you, Roy? Doing great, Jared. Good. Um, today we're just going to talk a little bit about home inspections. What's a home inspection about Roy's company, what they look for when they do inspect, and uh, seller's pre-inspection. So, Roy, tell us a little bit about Vigilant Home Inspections, the company. So, yeah, um, I started Vigilant a couple years ago, and uh, my goal with the company has been to provide more value than anyone else in in my market how do you do that by um well there's a lot of things i do jared i provide a 200 percent money back satisfaction guarantee mm -hmm. so at the end of the walkthrough if the client's not totally satisfied with my service i will not only waive my fee but i'll also pay out of my pocket wow. whoever you think can do better oh wow um, i also have a 90-day buyback guarantee so mm -hmm. From the day you close, forward 90 days, um, if anything comes up that I missed that I should have caught, I will buy the house back from you uh, for what you paid for it through my wow. association that's backed by InterNACHI. It's an international wow. association. They bought back over 6,000 homes wow. all over the United States wow. and in several other countries. None of those were homes that I inspected so far, but uh, you yeah, know, right. um, that, from, it's an and insurance. From my, my knowledge, you're the only person in the area that does something like that. I don't know mm -hmm. of anybody else with a buyback locally. I, I don't think anybody else is participating in that program. There are some guys around that it's available to. They just aren't aren't using it. Sure. Um, I'm certainly the only guy around with a 200% money back guarantee. That's nice. As I'm well. also the only person in the area who offers a 50% discount to veterans. There you go. That's so. Important. Yeah, I, I just that's something that uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of people think I'm a little bit crazy for, but I just yeah. decided that I it was something I wanted to do. So. It's something that should be done. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Uh, so regarding a whole house inspection, um, what are you looking for? Or take us through what a whole house inspection looks like. So um, a whole house inspection is literally what it sounds like. I'm going to walk on the roof. I'm going to go in the basement. I'm going to go in the crawl space. Mm -hmm. If there's a crawl space, I'm going to test as many outlets and windows as I can access. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open the electrical panel and uh, test the electrical panel. Um, just you know, check out the wiring inside of there and see what's going on. Um, I will run the AC and the heat, uh, depending on the season. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not able to test the AC in the winter time, but sure. um, you know, generally, just I'm going through and testing as many systems and as many things as I possibly can mm -hmm. to help the client have the most information possible about the home that they're about to purchase. Okay, and so you gather this information, you walk through the property and you look at all the components, uh, structural, mechanical, safety, health components. How does that information, how do you get that information to your um, to your clients, the buyers? So um, as I do the inspection, I'm actually writing the report as I go. Okay. So when I get done with the inspection, the report's already written. It's mm -hmm. digital, there's photos, um, so typically the client will meet me at the end of the inspection and we'll walk through the entire home to, in the same order that I did the inspection and I'll review everything that I found I'll answer any question that the client might have and um, and then when we're done um, I will upload that report to uh, to the cloud and I will email that off to the client so typically you're gonna have that report in your hands digitally within 30 minutes of right. leaving the property after we get done with the walkthrough. That's great. And as agents, then we take the report um, that Roy creates and work with you, the buyer, to create a list of um, remedies or if there's any major concerns of the property that uh, Roy and you have discussed we talk about how to remedy those and Roy has a really good system on the um, online version that you can select um, easily the components that you want yeah I think fixed. what you're talking about is the create repair list yep. tool yes so it's it's super super easy it's really slick you just go down and click the check boxes mm -hmm. for any summary items that you'd like to request that the seller take care mm -hmm. of and uh, and so it makes things a little cleaner, a little simpler. Definitely. What's the weirdest thing or the the um, oddest thing you've ever found in a home inspection? Uh, I, f I see a lot of weird stuff. It's a really fun job. Yeah. Um, yesterday, I found some insulation that was uh, in the attic that was actually shredded tree bark. Oh. Um, Eco friendly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a couple of. A couple of weeks ago, I uh, I was on a roof and I found about uh, oh probably 50 pounds of raccoon scat oh, uh, nice. <laughs> on the roof. <laughs> there must have been some so, low-hanging trees, or they yeah, some low-hanging like trees. So that raccoon had gone and, and done some damage to some yeah. shingles and some different things. So it's it. I mean, it, you just never know what you're gonna find. It's a little bit like being a forensic 
scientists, but uh, you know, without quite as many degrees. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but still, you know, there's still a lot of education and certification that. Comes oh, absolutely, that. absolutely. I think my my background in construction plays a big part in that. So. What'd you do before inspections? Uh, I have a background as a construction manager on multi million dollar projects. I've been I've built new construction homes. Uh, I've remodeled hundreds of of homes, mm -hmm. um, as, including significant renovations to uh, a lot of homes in Cedar Rapids that were flooded after mm -hmm. the the flood in two thousand eight. So, and I think that's essential um, that you have somebody not only that's just sat in the classroom and taking the test, but has actually been boots on the ground, um, swinging a hammer. Yeah. Um, fixing things that aren't right so I think I think it's important to have both you know I, I also have the certifications and all the paper documentation that verifies my background and what I'm what I'm telling you my experience is so I think it's important to have both because um, it's definitely possible to be in construction for 30 years and only do one thing mm -hmm. very um, I'm lucky that I have a, a very diverse varied background and uh, I'm able to to recognize a lot of different defects so sure that's exciting. And what um, what are the most common, a couple most common things that you find on a home inspection that um, whether they're um, not within code or um, you just see it frequently? Yeah. So, um, well, from the top down, the, the uh, number one thing that I would find on a roof is a lot of times you have a rubber gasket around a pipe sure. boot and that rubber gasket usually lasts about 10, 12 years mm -hmm. um, and it, the rubber will start splitting. Obviously, most modern shingles are going to last longer than that, sure. so that's the first thing that fails on the roof. Uh, it's a pretty easy fix. There's a thing called perma boot that just slides over that, yeah. to use it. So, what's anyway. the average? Uh, sorry to cut you off, but nope. what's the average life of a of a roof? So it it depends on the style of roof. You know, if you have three tab shingles, you're probably looking at 10, 15 years. Okay. Um, uh, the more common shingle now is a architectural mm -hmm. shingle. So it's multiple layers. Um, it's a built-up shingle, so that those shingles are last, you know, probably ten years longer. Sure. So 20, 20 to thirty years. Okay. You know. All right. Um, so from the top down, and then you go roof on the interior. I'm sure you see a lot of things like uh, GFCI outlets yeah. or ungrounding yeah. outlets that aren't wired right, or G. Uh, and so GFI is the little outlet that has the button on it. Yeah. So to, for safety to protect you. So I um, see a lot of the times older homes, dated homes, mm -hmm. won't be updated with that equipment yet. Sure. Um, a lot of times we'll see deck problems because okay. um, I, I think decks are just seen as something that a homeowner can do. Right. And, and it is if you educate yourself. Um, but I think people just kind of um, don't always get the proper knowledge that they would need to do it correctly. Right. So you might have the wrong nails or people using screws to attach a deck to a house or something like that. Yeah. So um, that's a common area to find issues. Um, the AC unit, it's really common to, to find that the foam sleeve that goes to the sure. condensing unit outside has disintegrated and, and needs mm -hmm. to be replaced. It's a really easy fix. So a lot of these things we're talking about, mm -hmm. they're not expensive to repair, sure. but it's just knowing that right that it's there um so which which leads me into the next thing is that for a seller i mean we get a deal together the the buyer writes an offer on the house contingent on home inspections and that's usually um where things can go awry or the deal can fall apart um, due to things found on the inspection or issues with the home so um, roy recently unveiled a product or a system um, called home pre-inspection um, move in certified uh, tell us a little bit about what sellers can do to help ease or a smooth transition through that inspection period so the the idea behind our move in certified pre-inspections is that uh, we want to put the the power back in the seller's court, right? Sure. So we want to have you be in control of what's going to happen, um, and being educated, knowing what's going on with your own home, is one of the best ways that you can do Absolutely. that and control the process. Right. So by getting your home pre-inspected, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to fix everything that I might find, sure, or anything for that matter. You may decide that you know what, this is just things that uh, that are minimal and I'm, we're just gonna pass that right. on to the next buyer. Right. But then that buyer is able to take that information and make it an educated offer. And a lot of times the the end result is that you're gonna have a higher net proceeds from the sale of your home. Sure. Because everybody's educated on the front end. Right. If there are things that need to be repaired, you're able to take your time getting bids. Right. You're not 
making a rush decision or paying inflated prices sure. based on you know using the contractor that the client or yeah. the person that's buying the home wants to use right. and things like that. So it just it puts a lot of the decisions back on sure. the the person selling the home yeah. rather than being in a position with tension and money and trying to make a deal and doing right. all that. You're you're taking a lot of the stress out of the whole right. process for. Uh, the buyer, for the seller, for the agents, just for everybody involved. Right. It really just helps things to be cleaner, simpler, and go smoother. Uh, and I, I totally agree uh, on, on my end of whether I'm representing the seller or the buyer once we do get to inspections and remedy requests. If this was already taken care of or at least disclosed or addressed, um, it saves a lot of time and a lot of hassle because uh, sometimes a buyer will come and they'll say, this needs to be fixed, but the quote or the generalized estimate is, you know, one to three times what it right. what it should be. So the sellers had a chance to before listing the house, gather the proper quotes, go in there and uh, get items what they like to be fixed done, and then also just to have a uh, ready report as a marketing piece to prospective buyers to say, look, here's what was found. It's not much, or here's what was found. We got it fixed. Yeah, and what's really great about this program with Vigilant in particular, as Jared said, we're the only ones in the area who have a 90-day buyback guarantee. Mm -hmm. And that starts at the day of closing, mm -hmm. and it does transfer to whoever the buyer is. So if you're a seller and you have your home pre-inspected pre through our Move-In Certified program, you are able to to offer that buyer that 90-day buyback guarantee. Sure. So that gives them some some assurance that... I, I did the inspection in the same way that I would have had they hired yep. me. Right. Um, I All the same things are mentioned in the report. They're, they have the same knowledge that they'd be equipped with if they had hired me after they had made the offer and had their offer accepted. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, that is one of the questions that we get sometimes, you know, how, uh, how can, uh, what if the buyer doesn't trust, you know, right. this inspection because sure. you did it for the seller? Well, no, I didn't. I did it for everybody. Yeah, you did and it for the house. I did it for the house. The inspection is what the inspection is. So the information is the same regardless of who writes the check. Sure. Um, does yeah, you're not sense? playing favorites. No. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, they, I, my goal is just to help everybody be educated and, and be able to make their decisions based on all the facts. Excellent. And so if you did a pre-inspection for a seller and the buyer um, still puts the uh, offer contingent on inspections because sure. there are some things that maybe that seller repaired, would you come back out then and take a look to see if they were repaired, those items on the remedy were repaired properly? I, absolutely, yeah. I would do. I would reinspect the home. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Um, anything else that's important uh, before closing here? Anything else important that a homeowner or a home buyer should know about property inspections? Um, I, I think the most important thing to know um, in Iowa is that there are, there are no regulations or licensing requirements for home inspectors. Oh, wow. So make sure that you're informed. Whoever you hire, make sure that you know what their background is, what their certifications are, Definitely. and um, and just that they have the knowledge that you want yeah. to have someone to have who's helping you make this biggest decision right. of your life. Right. Certified through InterNACHI, okay. which is the other uh, main certifying organization. Okay. So there's there are two associations. There were three. Uh, Nahi was the third. They recently oh, yes, have right. become defunct. Okay. Um, but InterNACHI is actually the largest and most widely recognized okay. in, the, in the world. Um, and uh, so anyway, Ashley's a very good organization. No, good but InterNACHI yeah. is also also a very reputable organization. And and uh, Ashley and InterNACHI inspectors. Either one. Uh, being certified is great. Um, it's not that difficult to get certified. Sure. To me, you know, you need to be certified. You also need to have a background sure. because anybody can take a test. Anybody can take a two-week course, um, but not everybody has a 15, 20, 30-year background yeah. in the industry. So. No, and, and very good points. Um, so in closing, where can people find you? How do people um, connect with you? Yeah, so uh, my phone number is 319-899-7538. Uh, my our website is vigilanthome.com. That's v i g i l a n t home.com. Mm -hmm. uh, check us out on Facebook. We got a Google page. You know, feel free to go read our reviews and see what everybody else is saying. We got uh, a lot of happy customers out yeah, there. So definitely. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great day. Take care.